We're going to start the notes over the stoichiometry. This is section 9.1, 9.2 in our book. Okay, now first thing we need to know about stoichiometry is stoichiometry shows the relationship between the amounts of reactants and products in a chemical equation. What stoichiometry does, stoichiometry um, gives us ratios and gives us the ability to calculate between different parts of a chemical reaction. Okay, for instance, we can go from moles to mass conversions and mass to mole conversions. Okay, and the first one we're going to do is we're going to go from a mole to mole conversion. Now, a mole to mole conversion, first thing we need to know about that is we're changing it from moles of A, which A can be anything, anything in the chemical equation can be any compound. So moles of A to moles of B, and B can be anything as well. And for this, we're going to use the coefficients in the balance equation to find the mole ratios. So it's really important that we incorporate chapter 8. We know chapter 8 very well so that we know how to balance equations and know how to predict chemical reactions so that we can do the stoichiometry. Now, an example of this, this is the chemical equation that we're going to be using. Two moles of aluminum oxide decomposes to form to form four moles of aluminum and three moles of oxygen gas. Now we look at it and we see that it's already balanced for us so we don't have to do that. But when we're referring to mole ratios, when we talk about that, we're looking at the coefficient. Remember the coefficient is the number at the beginning of the compound, the big number. Okay, And this is relating to moles. So this is telling us how many moles we have. So for every two moles of aluminum, aluminum oxide, we have four moles of aluminum. For every two moles of aluminum oxide, we have three moles of oxygen. So a two to three, a two to four, and then if we want to relate between oxygen and aluminum, we have a three to four ratio. Okay? So let's look at a problem that we can use this in. Now, it says if the reaction begins with 13 moles of aluminum oxide, how many moles of aluminum will be made? Okay? The main thing that we need to do on these, especially when we're working them, is to make sure and circle or box the important things. Anytime we see a number in a question, really important. Let's go ahead and box it. Okay? It says the reaction begins with 13 moles of aluminum oxide. Okay? So this is what we have. This is what the problem gives us. Then it says how many moles of aluminum will be made. This is what it wants. It's asking us for moles of aluminum. So this is what we have. This is what we want. Okay, first step is we always write down what we have. We have 13 moles of aluminum oxide. Okay, and we're going to set up and use our mole ratio to figure out how many moles of aluminum we have. So we have 13 moles of aluminum oxide. We're going to go ahead and look up here. We're comparing aluminum oxide to aluminum because that's what we want. So this ratio is a 2 to 4 ratio. So what we're going to do is we'll have two moles of aluminum oxide, and we put what we want up here, four moles of aluminum. Now, the reason why we put aluminum oxide on the bottom is because whatever we have in the numerator, if we have that in the denominator as well, we see that that unit will cancel. So we don't have that unit anymore, which is good because we want the unit moles of aluminum. So we multiply the top and divide by the bottom and we will get 52 divided by 2 and that will give us a total of 26 moles of aluminum. Okay. Now written all nice and neat is what it looks like. 13 times 4 52 divided by 2, 26. All right, next example. Using the same, we're going to use the same chemical equation through all of these examples. Now, if the reaction ends with 28 moles of oxygen, how many moles of aluminum oxide did we begin the reaction with? So we have 28 moles of oxygen. We always write down what it gives us. Now, what it wants is moles of aluminum oxide. So we know that we're going to have the ratio between this guy and that guy. So write down what we have. Let's figure out what we want. 
Now we need the same units in opposite boxes so we can cancel out those units. So this ratio is 3 moles of O2 to 2 moles of aluminum oxide. Okay, and we multiply the top, multiply the bottom, and we get 18.7 moles of aluminum oxide. Okay, what I mean by multiply the top, multiply the bottom, we're going to pretend that that has a 1 right there, because later on in our longer stoichiometry problems, we will have to multiply more numbers. Right now, it's just 1. All right, next example, how many moles of aluminum did you also end with? So, we have this. We want moles of aluminum, so we'll go ahead and set it up, and we'll have 28. And our mole, mole ratio is a 4 to 3. These units will cancel, multiply the top, divide by the bottom, and we get 37.3. And that's a mole to mole ratio. Now we are going to do a gram to mole ratio. Okay, what we're going to use is we're going to use the molar mass and the mole ratio in this. So we're going to have two conversion factors in this. First thing we're going to do is convert from grams of A to moles of A using molar mass, and then moles of A to moles of B using the molar ratio. Okay, big thing here. We're going from grams of A to moles of A. We have to do this and use the molar mass. Okay, and then we're going to use our coefficient just like we did in our mole to mole conversions. So we're just adding a step in a gram to mole conversion. Okay, the first one, if you begin the reaction with two grams of aluminum oxide, how many moles of oxygen? So we see we're going from grams to moles, and we're going from grams of aluminum oxide to moles of oxygen. So we're going to set this one up. We need to know the molar mass of aluminum oxide. To do that, all we do is add up the mass. We have aluminum and oxygen. We have two aluminums, three oxygens. Aluminum has a mass of 27, and oxygen has a mass of 16. Those are the atomic masses. We got that from the periodic table. So here, we'll have 54 and 48. Add those two together, and we get 102. Okay, so we need that. That's our first conversion factor. Now that 102, what it means written down is one mole of aluminum oxide equals 102 grams of aluminum oxide. Okay, we're going to go ahead and set up our problem. And we'll have two grams of aluminum oxide. And what we're going to do is get rid of that unit by using this conversion factor. And we'll put 102 grams of aluminum oxide. We put that on the bottom because we're matching up the units again. Remember, equals one mole of aluminum oxide. Now we use our mole ratio from what we had before. And we know that two moles of aluminum oxide equals three moles of Oh, I'm sorry, three moles of oxygen. I was going to write aluminum. Okay, written all nice and neat. Let's work it out. We go from grams to moles, moles to moles, and we get 0 0.0294 moles of oxygen.